It's time for exploring 3D experience works. Why? Welcome to episode seven of Exploring 3D Experience Works Live. So we got a great show here for you today. Um, as always, I'll be one of your hosts. My name is Gian Khaleesi. I am an industry process consultant for Dassault Systems SolidWorks, usually based out of Waltham, Massachusetts, but we're rocking the home office right now. And with me, as always, is my co-host, John. Go ahead and introduce yourself, John. Hello, everybody. Yes, my name is John Matarano. I am an industry process consultant, also at Dasso Systems SolidWorks, usually located in Waltham, also rocking the home office. Super excited to present what I have or we have prepared for you today. So with that, let's just uh, jump right into it. I will start sharing my screen and I can go ahead and hide my webcam. Awesome. So here is a tire rim that Gian has designed with both X shape and X design. So it is um, obviously very aesthetically pleasing and super awesome. So I'll be kind of playing the role of the project manager today. And um, in order to be you know, a project manager, I need to be able to assign some sort of tasks, right? And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. You can see we have all of our tasks um, that we usually have. So determining or you know, our webinar episode eight, Obviously, right now in progress is webinar episode seven. So to start, I'm just going to go ahead and create a task. So I'm going to say we are ready for the tire rim demo. All right. So I can add a description here. And obviously, I need to change my state from preliminary to ready. So that way, Gian sees it. And of course, I need to assign G on this task. And to do this, I'll just type in his name, comes right up. And this way, when I save it, he'll be notified. Lastly, I can add any sort of attachment or deliverables to help G on out, maybe a PDF or some sort of a, a sketch to start. But in this case, G on, I trust him. You know, he's good to go on his own. So I'll go ahead and save that out. And uh, he'll be instantly notified that we are ready for the tire rim demo. But in the meantime, also, as a um, project manager, you also have um, project planner, you know, available at your fingertips too. So this is a, just a kind of a higher level overview of what you could see. So I have, I can create a, a bunch of different projects in this case, and I can also take a look at a schedule. So we have a Gantt chart view here. I can add members if I'd like to. And we can also take a look at a summary, which we have some super important metrics that we can take a look at. For example, we can see if tasks are at risk for running late or if they're running late. In this case, both of our tasks are running on time. And we can see that we have to do in progress and done as well as, you know, you come down and we can see assignees with open tasks as well. So um, just super um, awesome tools that are available on the 3D Experience platform to project managers. So with that, Gian, I think it's your turn to have some fun modeling. Oh, are yeah. you ready? Yep, I am ready. So able to see my screen here? Yes. Perfect. All right. So as you can see here, I see the task that John just assigned to me. So we're ready for the tire rim demo. Perfect. So I see everything in here, no attachments or deliverables. I'm just going to jump right in. I have everything I need. I'm just going to drag this into in progress while I do that. And I can minimize my collaborative tasks window and maximize my X design window. So as you can see here, we're starting really with an empty sheet of paper. I've just put a few sketches in here to save us a little bit of time. But let's go ahead and jump right into it. We have the first sketch here that we created just for the internal kind of hub of the tire. And I can create a nice easy revolve feature. Just gonna select my access and profile and it'll automatically propagate a nice preview there for me. You know, one thing that I will know is that I'm only making a fifth of this tire right now because we only have five spokes. So why design it five times if I could just design it once and then make a nice pattern. So I'm gonna go by mid plane here instead. And as you can see, I've already have it set to 72, but if I didn't want to do the math in my head or whatever the case might be. Say I just have three, 360 degrees here and then just divide it by five and it'll calculate 72 there for me. So perfect, nice and easy. And let's move on to our next sketch. So now we have our outer rim tire here. 
So we really just want to have, we just have this line segment here that we're going to use to revolve our, the outer rim of our actual tire. So our two primary features and oops, whoops, accidentally hit a sweep command, but not a problem at all because due to our super feature here, I can just switch right over to a revolve instead. And I will just grab the uh, revolve axis that I want and then uh, grab all of the sketch entities that I want to include with a nice box select. And I'm getting an error because I haven't set it to thin, but I really just want a nice thin feature here. So making sure that that is the way we want it here and we have the right revolve axis. And with just two millimeter, two and a half millimeters of thickness, and I want to do the same thing and make sure that this is another mid-plane revolve of 72 degrees because once again, we're only making a fifth of this part right now and then we'll take care of the rest after. So I like that. I just want to make sure that we are revolving on the correct side of this sketch. So if I wanted the thickness on the other side, I could switch that, but we had it right the first time, so I will put it back the way it was and just accept that. So now we've st we have a few parametric features here that we're starting with. You know, we have the hub and then we have the outer rim. And now let's actually move to my favorite part, what I think is the most fun part. That's the part that we use X-Shape for to actually design this spoke. So I've switched over to my X-Shape tools and it's in the same window. I don't even have to switch windows or anything. I just brought up that app that switch app menu and switch to the one that I wanted. And now I'm just gonna show my reference images for the actual spoke itself. And now it's time to start using X-Shape. So we can start, the way we, we use X-Shape and really most subdivision tools is just by starting with the primitive shape and then we'll push and pull things into place until we get the general shape that we're looking for. And before we even start doing that to individual faces or entities, I can scale the entire thing uniformly or in any of the three principal directions here. And I can also change the amount of control segments that I have going around the entire body here that we're playing with. So I think that that's, that should be a fine starting point for now. Um, I'll just leave that the way it is and let's get in there and start moving things around. So the first thing that I wanna make sure that I do is just get this into place so that I can add some symmetry and you'll see right now I'm using the robot tool, which is the primary tool for translating, for rotating, and for scaling. So it's very easy to use and very intuitive. Let's go ahead and add that symmetry we were talking about. So I'll enable symmetry here and then just select the plane that I want to show here. Uh, I'm just gonna make sure I'm showing these planes and perfect. So now you'll see a nice green line that propagated around our body here. And that's just showing us where the symmetry is actually acting about in our model. And now I think that I'm ready to add some nice sharp corners around the entire model so I can do that easily like such. And let's start manipulating this thing into place one profile at a time. So we can grab this entire model, I can drag this up, I can rotate it so it's that same general shape that we're looking for, and I have that sketch as my kind of reference image here through all of this. So maybe I want this to have a little bit more curve to it and have this come up over here in the front of our part, so I can easily do that. And maybe I want a little bit of draft in the front, so I can just make sure I'm in going only in the X direction and then add that draft as we see it. So we get a nice corner here. It's not going straight up and down. So it's a little bit more easy to manufacture. Same thing here. We don't need so much thickness. I can get rid of that if I want to. Um, and I can also just grab really any selection of points or edges or faces that I want that I think will help me get the geometry that I'm looking for. But I think that we're good with the side profile, at least for now. So I'm gonna to switch to the top profile and you'll see that it looks like we have a little bit more mass to kind of the base of this spoke. So I can just scale the entire thing outward like such. And I can round off this front edge just by dragging those faces the way you see I'm doing that. And maybe I need a little bit more control over this model. So maybe I don't have enough of these edges going around in this direction. I can easily 
easily just add another one. I'll just add and I'll just grab an edge and click insert loops and it'll create one in the perpendicular, perpendicular direction compared to the one that I selected. So as you would, I can just keep, continue to grab things, push and pull them into place here. And maybe I don't want this uh, to be getting out of the, to be intersecting with my model over there. So I can take care of that. Now we want to add a little bit of draft. So I want to make sure that all my faces on the top here are smaller than the bottom so that I get a little bit of an angle of draft along this side wall here, along this entire, uh, sorry, rather, along the entire body here. So what I can do is actually just grab all the faces that I want and I can scale them all in at once. So I can just grab our point here to scale and beautiful. So we get that, that draft we're looking for. We see our, our top face is smaller than our bottom and we're in a pretty good spot here. So let's add a little more style to this now. Maybe I wanna grab all these faces again and add a little offset edge. I can do that by using our subdivide tool. Just grabbing all the faces and now we have some more loops going around. Uh, nice offset from the outer edge here. And maybe I want to make a nice sharp corner for them. So we can get that kind of ridge around the outside of our rim that we're looking for. And I think that this is starting to really come along, but I want this, this edge to be more defined. I can grab all of the edges that I'm looking for to pull and just push them all down at once so that we get that sharp corner we're looking for out here. And maybe this is dramatic enough. Um, so, up here, but not so much down here. I can just drag. I can just grab the edges that I would like down here and just drag those down easily. So it sounds to me, Gian, like you can pick any line, any face, any node, any vertex, and just go ahead and you know push and pull it in the direction you like. It would seem super intuitive and, and super easy. Exactly, John. It's it's very intuitive. It's it's like playing with just a hunk of digital clay right here on the 3D experience platform. Very awesome. intuitive, easy to use. So at this point, I think we're I think we might be just about done with our X shape part already. So I think I can hide these sketches now and get back to some of our more traditional features to make this again more functional. So that's the whole point here is we want to show you that X shape can be used in completely functional models. So before I jump back to X-Design, I'm just going to combine these bodies, which I could do in X-Design or X-Shape, but just wanted to point out that you are able to use a certain set of these same features that exist in X-Design in X-Shape too. So just combining these all into one body, and we're looking pretty good now. So let's switch back to X-Design and start adding some more of those final parametric features that we're looking for. So just like before, we just switch over without skipping a beat. And now I have this little bit of extra material here sticking out. And I could have tried to design around that in X shape and maybe tried to line this up perfectly within our body that was already here for the outer rim. But why make my life more difficult when I can simply, I can simply just grab another sketch and just cut away everything on the outside. So what I'll do is grab another revolve feature and just set my axis and my profile and make sure that we're cutting away material. And then just like that, that's gone. That little hunk of material is gone. We don't have to worry anymore. And we can keep moving along with our parametric features here. So one thing that I want to do at first is, add, is reduce some stress concentration here. There's no need to have a corner here if we don't need it. So let's add a nice fillet here to this back edge. And this one can be pretty large. Um, and go all the way to that to the bottom of our, our hub there. So that looks pretty good to me. I think I'll add a couple other smaller fillets just for some style. So maybe I only want this to be about two millimeters. I can do that. And maybe I want the inside edge as well as this one kind of going around uh, our connection to the hub, to, from the hub to the spoke. So that looks great to me. And now let's move on to uh, Almost our final parametric feature. I'm just going to punch a hole through this thing. I'm just going to jump right into another extrude command. The beauty of being able to just switch from adding material to cutting away saves so much time 
and I can just cut through everything. And maybe I want another little counter bore here. I can show this sketch once again. And you know, I could have used our whole command if I wanted to, or if I want a little bit more control with the sketches, I can do it this way too. And let's make sure we're going through just one way. And I'm gonna use my advanced settings because right now, uh, from where the sketch is starting is not actually where I want the cut to start. So I'm gonna actually have it set from an offset. And I've already put in my 15 there. If I wanted to change that, I could. Um, I can also switch which direction the offset is in, but we have it in the correct orientation here, which is perfect. So making sure we're cutting away material and beautiful. So I'll hide our sketch here and now let's move on to the last and I think what I think is the most satisfying part of this model, which is using our circular pattern to bring it all together. So I'm just gonna show one of our sketches once again that has our axis of revolution here. And I'm just gonna enable body selection. So I'm gonna take this entire body, this whole thing is one body right now, and I'm gonna revolve it around our axis and our sketch right here, and just make sure that we have five instances going around our 360 degree pattern angle. And perfect, we see a nice preview, and I can accept that. And now, I'm just gonna hide my sketches and make sure that we're viewing this in a way that's easy to see here. And we can visually verify that this is, this is all come together. We have all the features where we want them. We were able to do this in really a short amount of time so I'm pretty happy with this model. So I think that I'm just about ready to save this out. I'm gonna jump back to my task here, my task in progress, and I'm gonna attach it to my deliverables. And this is one of my favorite things about this uh, is that I can drag it right in from X Design. So I can go to my lifecycle tab and show my history just so that I know I'm grabbing the right revision. And I only have one revision in this case, so I'll just drag that one right over to my deliverables and just save it. And now the most satisfying part of our using our collaborative tasks, dragging that task to done. It's what a great feeling. So with that, I think that I think that my model's done. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pass it back to John so that he can just give it a little review and let me know what he thinks. All right, thank you, John. And it should be presenting my screen now, and we can oh, see yeah. right away that our task the we are ready for tire rim demo task has been added to the done column right away and you can see by this little paper clip icon we have an attachment so i can go ahead and edit this task and i can go ahead and grab that just simply drag and grab this and, and drop it into our viewer and it updates for us instantaneously with the new model in our 3d play app again this is just a viewer for anybody to kind of look and, and, and see what any any sort of changes we would need to make as a sort of a project manager and kind of just viewing that overall engineering process. So, I mean, I think this is, first of all, this is absolutely incredible that Gian was able to create something, you know, I'm gonna call it from scratch in 20 minutes, less than 20 minutes. Um, but you know, I can't let him get off the hook that easily. I do see here that these bolt holes, uh, there doesn't appear to be any draft on them. So what I'm gonna do, I could um, use my markup tool here available uh, in this 3D play app, but instead what I'm gonna do actually is an even something super simple because there are only, you know, one set of bolt holes I can, instead just add a comment. I could just say, can you please add draft to bolt holes? I'll say three degrees. I'll send that right off to Gian and he'll get a notification as soon as I drag this from done to back to in progress. And now I think the ball is in Gian's court to go ahead and, and, and make those changes. Let's see how you handle this, Gian. <laughs> uh, don't make it too easy for me, John. I can see here, if you're able to see my screen, yep, perfect. So you should be able to see, I can see, I can take a look at John's comment here. That makes complete sense too, because there's no need to mark something up 
in more detail than you need, you know. So with that, let's just go ahead and jump right back into our model here. And I can easily just jump back into the feature that I used to add that counter bore. So we just want the draft on this counter bore and I can just easily do that. And I already have it set to three degrees. You know, maybe if it's in the wrong direction, we can switch that and call it a day. So that was pretty easy, John. That was an easy change. So now I'm just maybe gonna- Maybe next time I'll make it a little bit harder on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give me a challenge next time. But just so, for the sake of the demonstration, I'm just gonna let John know that we are all set now. And now I can just close out this task and drag it back to my done column and call it a day. Wow. So I think that that's about it that we had for our demonstration today, right, John? Yeah, but I think uh, we have a survey, right? Oh, yes. So now it's time for us to hear from you from our viewers. We wanna know what everybody wants to see more of in exploring 3D Experience Works live. Um, we we wanna to cater to whatever our viewers wanna see more of. So let us know, you can choose as many of those options on this little poll question as you'd like, and we will do our best to incorporate uh, the results of this survey in all of our future webinars or in some of our future sessions. And while you're also doing that, this is a great time to Post some questions in the in the question box of the webinar window if you have any. Um, and as just want to mention as well that we do we are offering a free trial of the 3D Experience platform, and you can find a link to register for a free trial in the chat box of the webinar window, as well as in our follow-up email that will be sent out about an hour or so after the conclusion of the webinar. And it looks like we have some questions here already. So yeah, I can see one for you. I think this one would be perfect for you to answer, Gian. This one just says, can you add material? Uh, yes, very easy to do. And the material works. The material you apply in XDesign and or XShape uh, is not just visual. Obviously, it's, it's just like SolidWorks desktop in that it will apply the true mechanical properties of whatever material you select to the entire model so you can do things like run simulation on this. Yeah, you know, also, Jan, I'm, I'm pretty sure, too, there's a cover option on, on a material catalog where it will only just affect the actual graphical changes for you if you don't want to change the physical properties, which is All also right. cool to have that flexibility, too. Oh, yeah. I think that I see another one that I could probably handle, and uh, it's can we use this with SolidWorks instead of XDesign? And yes, that is completely possible. So there is a workflow for using XShape and uh, SolidWorks Desktop in tandem, and we're actually working on uh, a workflow to, to give a demo that is exactly what you're describing there in one of our future webinars. I won't say it's the next one, but it'll be coming up soon, I promise. <laughs> And do we have any others right now? Um, you know what, I, I, we don't seem to have any other questions, but one thing I will mention is that although we've been, you know, this is our seventh webinar that we're given, um, I do always forget to mention that we ran this entire demo, not only live, but in a browser, okay? So that means if you are running on a PC or a Mac, it works all the same from any device, no downloads or installs required. You know, I would say it's ready to go right out the box, but there is actually no box. So um, yeah, I think that pretty much wraps it up for the questions we have. As always, if you'd like to sign up for a free trial of the 3D Experience platform, there'll be a link in the chat. As well, we'll also send out a follow-up email. So it's always nice to see your smiling faces, so be sure to check out our next webinar at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Monday, May 18th. And uh, everybody else, just uh, or everybody, have a great day and stay safe, most importantly. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one.